Hello. I got a few little projects going on. I'm going to bother you with them, and then I'm going to talk about uh, the Neil deGrasse Tyson thing we went to last week. Uh, first things first, in a couple hours, I'll be doing my first open mic night in a couple of months at a club in Mishawaka. I don't know how that'll go, but we'll find out. I'll play next week. There's a film festival in Chicago that's kind of right up the uh, alley of the themes of the two films I've made so far. So I'm going to re-edit and submit them to that. I've learned a few things about editing since then. Well, a few things about films since then, and I'd like to uh, change them a little bit. I will repost them here afterwards. Or not here, on my own channel. Uh, secondly, uh, I wrote another script. I started one. It's proceeding a little slowly. I've taken out and uh, edited a bit of a novel. And that's it as far as projects go right now, I think, uh, that I'm willing to talk about, I guess. Secondly is Neil deGrasse Tyson. Now, Asia and I and a couple friends had these really nice discussions afterwards, and we're both sharing different parts of it. She did a great video just now on uh, academics and the relationship in academics and life and being a whole rounded person, I'm going to bitch about the audience. Asia was kind of miffed that there was a standing ovation beforehand. I was one of the people who went along with it. Chapo said it's because of his previous work, but Asia raises a good point that it's kind of unfair to a performer to open with a standing ovation, and then Neil deGrasse Tyson actually hits us with that point almost immediately. His stage presence was awesome because it was showy but also laid back, you know? He's done this so often. His presence was very sort of refreshingly low key. There wasn't a lot of theatrics to it, but he was very big. It didn't seem overly rehearsed, but it didn't seem completely off the cuff. Which was a nice balance, I think. But he had the Q&A at the end. The Q&A ran really long, and occasionally there were some gruelingly horrible questions, which I will now bitch about with you. Uh, I think the worst one for me was this guy who talked about himself for, I'd say, about 15 seconds before he getting about around. about his journey. He talked about his journey, his growth as a person. And the only place that's really appropriate for, I think, is social networking and media, where it's a one-way conversation about yourself anyways. It's a Facebook post, it's a tweet, it's a vlog. But why it was so annoying there was he was forcing all of us to watch his vlog. And uh, that's not really fair. Like, I'm talking about my own journey and shit, I guess. But I'm not forcing uh, 900 strangers to play along. His journey was not the point he was up there. It was a Q&A, not a rant and Q&A, right? We want to hear Neil deGrasse Tyson, we want to hear you ask a good question, and not just ask a question about yourself, which is a subject he doesn't really know about, which brings me to my second favorite question of the night, least favorite question of the night, which is the guy who uh, walked up there with sort of this logic puzzle, very formally stated question about uh, causal and non-causal reactions or something, and Frankly, he, he worded the question in such a way that there were only two options and paradoxical, and he just wanted to throw that in the guy's face and hear the guy commit to one philosophy or another, which Neil deGrasse Tyson didn't. He said, I don't know. I wouldn't know. And to limit yourselves to those options is ridiculous. We don't know if those are the conditions or those are the options. The universe is what it is, and it does not care about what your beliefs are. The universe just is. Right? And that also relates to another thing, which he was always talking about art and science at the frontiers of our ignorance, fighting the good fight, you know? Which is a very good analogy, but we also... That fighting ignorance does not mean pretending we don't know what we don't know. Some of the more refreshing moments of the speech last night, or last week, were when Tyson admitted, I don't know. No one knows. We don't know. Uh, if you pretend you know everything, you're coddling and sheltering ignorance instead of fighting it. We all have to be honest about what we don't know. What was another question? Uh, the guy who kept haranguing him with the same question about space and public opinion. That was a good question. I just wish he'd asked it once instead of three times. And finally, I'm going to end with what I thought was the best question of the night. The, the best question that makes me feel hopeful about the audience. There's a lot of kids there that night. He talked directly to like three or four kids, which I think is a great sort of tactic to engage with the audience, you engage with the kids who have more potential than the surly college kid who's already picked his path or whatever, right? But um, I love the kid, the last kid. Even though there was, Tyson said he'd take two more questions, this kid asked one and he ended it because it was such a good question. Kid walked up to the microphone, just asked, what happens when two black holes hit each other? That's a cue. That is a cue. That is one question with no, no, the kid did not say as a seventh grader, 
I am curious in my education. No, he did not refer to himself. It wasn't an ego-based question. It wasn't an intention-based question. It wasn't a tweet, a self-serving tweet. It was just a pure reaching out for knowledge that the kid didn't have. He admitted he had no idea. He didn't ask, would if two black holes hit each other, create an Epstein bar field or whatever? No. He asked, what the hell happens? And Tyson gave the best answer, which is, he knows someone who wrote a paper on it, but he doesn't really know. Black holes are things no one really knows. Black holes are what happens when you divide by zero or whatever. It is a conundrum we don't know. And there are people who know a lot about black holes, a lot more than me, but we still don't know a lot about them. We still don't know a lot about everything. I would, you know, hell, we don't know a lot. But that does not mean our knowledge is useless, and that does not mean we should coddle ignorance by pretending it doesn't exist. Uh, I think there were ego-based questions because people wanted to make themselves part of an event. They didn't want to just participate because they want attention. They want the attention. They want the attention Tyson's getting. They want that for a brief, fleeting moment. And you know what? You can get that by asking a good question, not about talking about yourself that nobody wants to hear. I, I bet you in five years I won't remember any of these guys who wasted my time. I'll probably remember that kid, because that's an interesting question. What does happen when two black holes? But that's about it. We're at Bendix Woods, by the way. I don't know if either of us said that. But this is the scum pond. It's beautiful. It's not scum, it's algae. That's about it. Wish me luck tonight. Even though by the time this is posted, it'll long since be over. I'll let you know how that goes in a later video. Uh, bye.